Good morning. This is Daniel with Park Talks. I'm here with Ronnie. He's going to take our devotions. Take it, Ronnie. January 3rd, know your neighbor. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against a fellow Israelite, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Leviticus 19.18 The word, word neighbor is mentioned more than 130 times in the Bible. Among other things, we are told not to give false witness against our neighbors. Exodus 20.16 Or covet our neighbor's house or wife. Deuteronomy 5.28 we are instructed to build up our neighbors for their good. Romans 15, 2. Love your neighbor as ourselves. Leviticus 19, 18. That last one is probably the most famous. Jesus even used those words when he was asked about the greatest command in all of the Old Testament law. Matthew 22, 39. Yet despite the importance of importance the Bible places on how great our neighbors research shows that many of us don't really know our neighbors. How can we love our neighbors if we don't even know them? Guilty of that. Right, exactly. Who doesn't know their neighbor? Uh, the Bible describes a neighbor in broad terms, including people in need whom we come across, not just people who live on our street. When we concentrate on knowing and loving the people in our community, we too are blessed. Studies show that we... When we know our neighbors, we build a safer, stronger, healthier environment to live in. The best part is that it doesn't take a lot of effort to get to know our neighbors. We just need to be friendly and say hello. Taking the initiative may stretch our comfort level a little, but it's the right thing to do. We may even make some new friends and find opportunities to share the gospel in the process. Such a hard time reading today for some reason. That's all right. Shorter beard does that to people. <laughs> Make it one of your resolutions this year to know your neighbors better. It's not complicated. It just takes a little intentional effort. Wow. Intent Moment of strength, Matthew 22, 36 through 40. Intentional effort. Like, we have to do that? There's been a couple times where I was going to go help my neighbor, but I was like, look at my yard. That's How do you kidding. love who you don't know? Can't. Right. Mm. So then, if Jesus is telling us in Matthew and several other times, you said over 130 times to love your neighbor, or the neighbor, the word neighbor is used? The word neighbor is mentioned more than 130 times. More than 130 now. times. Could you think of something that would be mentioned more than that besides love? 130 times. How about 175 times? Is it like greed? Love. No. Sorry. How about 182 times? Different version of the same Bible. How about KJV 189 times? What if your neighbor's a fool? What if their ways are foolish and folly? We're going to talk about what that looks like. Because we are to, we're called to love our neighbors irregardless of who they are. Okay. Maybe they have same gender desires. Maybe they are a different race or a different political alignment. We've had a lot of different political divides and different divides in this last year. But what if they're just a fool and they're foolish and senseless? Their actions are without reason. They're without intelligence. <clears throat> what if they even say there's no God? They're broke all the time. Let's look into this. What is a fool? One of the best known verses about a fool in the Bible is from Psalms 14.1, which says, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They do abominable deeds. Remember this. We're going to get into that a little later in a few pages. And there is none who does good. So would a fool be selfish, self-centered, self-driven, selfie, I mean selfish, yeah, wanting to blurt their personal opinion all the time and just slander people and contemptuous. Yeah, a fool. And they're broke. Hey, man, can you hook me up with some money? I need five dollars. Hey, give me ten dollars for gas. Hey, I don't, I don't live around here. I need ten dollars to get back where I live. I do that too many times. What? Like thinking back. Giving money to people? Yeah, if they ain't got no money, don't give them yours. You know, you, you, you talk to a fool and you actually like, give them a word of knowledge. And I don't mean get a job. I mean a word, something that's, you really... I can't. And they, they look at you stupid and dumbfounded, like, huh? I have gave a guy a bottle of water before. Uh -huh. 
you know, as I was passing through, like somebody. Why wouldn't you? Uh, for so, for someone who is in need, a bottle of water will fill the majority of their needs. Now, if they need heat, it won't put them heat. But if they don't have water in their body, they will die, and the heat is irrelevant. I guess I've even kind of looked at some people on the street and like, are they really? Are they, are they homeless or are they? You know what I mean? Because you have some people. You that, have to use wisdom. Yeah. You have to use wisdom. And that, that's where. And fool, I lack that. And, no, you know. When I was but younger. But a fool, when you were younger. Yeah. Most younger people lack wisdom. I mean, if you look in James, it says, without doubting, if you don't have wisdom, ask God, and he'll give it to you. But don't ask him and then doubt, because, you know, that, that's a fool in their self to ask God for something and go, oh, it'll never happen. It'll never happen. Not to me. That's that negative yeah. mindset that. Oh, God bless me, but I don't want to be. I'm not worthy of being blessed. Really? Come on. That's a fool. You know, when Jesus raised that, that, that little girl from the dead, okay, back in the Gospels, Remember the first thing he did when he got to the house? He uh, cleared everybody out. Uh, okay. Why? He'd get rid of all doubt. Yeah. All the doubt had to go. Remember we talk about the, the scene where the, the four buddies ripped the roof off a house. They went up the back mm -hmm. wall, ripped, ripped the roof off the porch to get them down. Okay, were they fools or were they guided and driven? Did they have a meaning? They had a purpose. Fools don't have purpose. It'd be foolish to take a ship and rip the rudder off of it. Toss the crew off, wouldn't it? You got nobody on that boat. You got no rudder. It doesn't matter if you got a rudder or not. You got no crew. That's foolish. Mm -hmm. A fool would do that. The Hebrew word used for fool in Psalms 14.1 is N-A-B-A-L, Nabel, which means foolish or senseless. And indeed, it is foolish not to believe that God exists. I'm not calling God, I'm not calling a non-believer a fool. God is. In the New Testament, the Greek word used for fool is A-P-H-R hyphen over the O-N, aphron, which means without reason, without intelligence, or senseless. As we read in Luke 12, 20, when Jesus says, fool, this night your soul is required of you. And the things that you have prepared, or whose will they be? In both of, those, of these cases, it is foolish to deny the existence of God. And for the one who Jesus spoke about in Luke 12, it is foolish for the rich man to deny God at the end of his life. The one who lays up treasure for himself is not rich towards God. That's Luke 12, 21. The numbers I went back to earlier, ESV, the word fool, is moved 175 times. NIV, 182. KJV, 189. Really? Yeah. So it's almost like That's more translations, less fool, the God. word fool is being used. Now, all this is in Proverbs. I'm going to go kind of quick because there's a lot of meat to eat real real fast here. Sorry, I would be following along with you. No, it's okay. It, but but we're going to jump up. right into Proverbs 1. Here's an interesting question. How long, O oh simple ones, will you love being simple? Say that again. How long, O oh simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? Because if you're given knowledge, you've got to do something with it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Simple people, milk drinkers. Think of a baby. A baby's pretty simple. I mean, they cry a lot. They're complicated. They want to eat, be cuddled, and, and, and have a clean diaper, right? Mm -hmm. Warm bed. They just want love. So let's say they're a simple one. But how long is that baby supposed to remain a baby? They become a toddler. They become an I mean, they go infant to toddler, and they grow up into an adulthood, right? right? A dog. Let's look at a dog. What is it? Take human years times some number to reach a dog years, like six or seven or something crazy? Mm -hmm. That makes our six-year-old dog old. Yeah. Yeah, six human years times whatever the dog multiplier is. What is it? Three, six, seven, I don't know, something crazy like that. Puts that dog up a few days, right? Mm -hmm. We all grow old. Everything has a season. And during the seasons of our life, we gain knowledge. If we don't use the knowledge, then we're wasting it. If we don't use the wisdom, we're, we're wasting it. Why would we ask God for more of what we've already wasted? That don't make any sense. Mm -hmm. It ain't even less sense for him to fulfill that prayer. Hmm. Oh, scoffers, how long will scoffers delight in their scoffing? Hmm. Okay, let's jump down a little bit more. The wise lay up knowledge, but the mouth of fools bring ruin near. That's true. 
The one who conceals hatred has lying lips, but whoever utters slander is a fool. You ever say something bad about somebody? That's slander. At work? It's easy Period. to do. Doing, it is easy if you allow it to be. You allow it to be. Yeah. Doing wrong is like a joke to a fool. You mean like letting the air out of someone's tire or putting a tack on your chair or playing a joke on them? Yeah. Doing wrong is like a joke to a fool. But wisdom is pleasure to a man of understanding. So if you want to be a wise individual, why fool around? Why play around? Why embarrass people? That's just disrespect. That's somebody who doesn't understand. Well, and I, looking into that, right, because mm -hmm. I was growing up in school. Yeah, when you're a child, you did things of a childish way, right? I, absolutely. Knocking someone's books out of their hands, yeah, laughing. when you was a kid. But then I'd pick them up. But you were still a kid. That doesn't excuse fun. it. Yeah, it doesn't. It still doesn't, doesn't excuse it, but you were a, a kid. But doesn't bully. the scripture say when I was a child, I did things of a childish way, but now I'm a man, I put them, on, put them away, put them under? Mm -hmm. I mean, a wife isn't going to want a child as a, as a man. Um, <clears throat> the way of a fool is right in his own eyes. Maybe this guy who's just sitting in his in-law's house or living in the mom and dad's house and playing like he's an adult thinks he's doing the right thing. But a wise man listens to advice. So if I went to this guy and I was like, dude, 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 I know you can get this really neat job, pays pretty decent, you can get up on your own, take care of your kids, get some insurance. Now, if he pushes me away, what would that be? Well, if he walks away from that advice, what do you think it'd be? Sorry. He's foolish. Yeah, he's foolish. Yeah, but if he grabbed <clears throat> hold of the advice and he took himself a job and he got his family up on his own, he grew up, he became a man, well, that'd be a wise individual. Mm -hmm. He moved away from his foolish season. The vexation of a fool is known at once. Vexation. Wow, that's more than a four-letter word. The state of being annoyed, frustrated, or worried. Ooh. I gotta walk. But the prudent ignores an insult. By the mouth of a fool comes the rod for his back, but the lips of the wise will preserve them. Leave the presence of a fool, for there you do not meet words of knowledge. A man of quick temper acts foolishly. A man of evil devices is hated. Why should a fool have money in his hand to buy wisdom when he has no sense? Here's a question. Is that why so many kids are stopped dropping out of college? That they have they're, no they're money in their hand to go to college, yeah. but they don't want wisdom. They want foolish folly and party. But they're all, also the other side of it when they're like, oh, I've got all this debt. How do I get rid of it? Do, work. Finish college, get a job. Finish college, get a job. Uh, that's... Finish college, get a job, yeah. get out of mom and dad's purse and pocket, and go get a job, and then pay your bills. A fool wouldn't do that. But I'm curious, it says, why should a fool have money in his hand to buy wisdom when he has no sense? That's the scripture. I'm just curious, is this the reason a lot of kids drop out of college? He's got money, but he ain't got no common sense of what to do with it. Go buy a case of beer for his buddies, get a faster car, well, now I gotta go get a job because I want this party life more than this education life. What did I work hard in college for five or six or seven or eight years? I didn't have 10 of them cars. I think that's why people are supposed to work hard and smart when they're young. So when they get old, they ain't gotta work hard all, all their life. I mean, they work hard at what they do, but they ain't gotta bust their back if they can use their head. Even a fool who keeps silent is considered wise when he closes his lips. He is deemed intelligent. A fool takes no pleasure in understanding but only expresses, only expressing in his opinion. Better is a poor person who walks in his integrity than one who is crooked in speech and is a fool. It is an honor to keep a man aloof. Aloof? Aloof? It is an honor to keep a man aloof, conspicuously uninvolved and uninterested, typically through distaste. Okay, so it is an honor for a man to keep aloof from strife, but every fool will be quarreling. And this comes right out of the scripture. Do not speak in the hearing of fools, for he will despise the good sense of your words. Wisdom is too high for a fool. In the gates, he does not open his mouth. 
I like to avoid confrontation. You just let it go on around you when you know you can step up and say something and stop it and bring halt. That causes confrontation and conflict, right? Like snow in summer, think about that. Like snow in summer or rain in harvest, so honor is not fitting for a fool. A sparrow in its flitting, like the swallow in its flying, a curse that is causeless does not alight. A whip for the horses, a bridle for the donkey, a rod for the back of fools. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest you be like him yourself. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own eyes. Whosoever sends a message by the hand of the fool cuts off his own feet and drinks violence. Like a lame man's leg, which hangs useless, is a proverb in a fool's mouth. Mouth. In the mouth of, is, a, is a proverb in the mouth of fools, like one who binds a stone into a sling. I like that one there. Just picture that. You take a sling, you have two strings, you have a pouch, you put a stone in it. Got that? Now you take a piece of cordage and you tie the stone in place. How's that stone going to come out when you sling it? It's not like putting a big bolt in the end of the barrel of your gun and pulling the trigger. Mm -hmm. Ain't going to come out. Matter of fact, you're wasting time, energy, you're probably going to hurt yourself. Because when you normally do that swing, that stone's going to come around. Hit your head. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so like one who binds a stone in the sling is one who gives honor to a fool. Like a throne that grows up in the hand of a drunkard is a proverb in the mouth of fools. Like an archer who wounds everybody is one who hires a passing fool or drunkard. So if I just give a fool a job for a couple of days, I'm really like an archer who wounds everybody. Why wouldn't with I just... With their mouth. Right? Yeah. Like, well... Being negative, cutting them down. Why wouldn't I just want to hire somebody of good moral and, you know, good statute, good integrity instead of a drunkard or a fool? Someone who's always got to be stupid about things, complaining, contemptuous, griping. I mean, we already read a lot about those things. Whatever you give him, he's going to lose. You know, give him, give him money. What do they do? Fooling their money soon, part. That's why gambling is so popular right now, I think. But by the same people who go to spend all the money, they're saying, oh, there's no God. Again, we confirm scripture just by talking to people, especially at casinos. Like a dog that returns to its vomit, a fool who repeats his folly. I think as people get older, you know, that invest or have their own business, right? Go to the casino, spend their spend money too, because they, they're looking out for their kids and grandkids, right? How are you looking money if you're gambling at a casino? Say again? How are you looking out for anybody, your kids, your grandkids, if you're wasting money at a casino and teaching the kids this is a proper function to do with the money you have? What good comes out of a casino? What comes out of a casino? Uh, um, Loss of money, prostitution, drugs, organized crime like, and gangs. Like you see with, on your apps nowadays? Any of them. I don't yeah. care if you're going to a brick and mortar place yeah. or if you're playing on the app or if yeah. you're doing this online betting. Yeah. A fool in their money is soon parted, yeah. period. A fool in his heart has said there's no God. Hmm. A fool would bind their sling, their stone, into a sling. And anybody who gives honor to a fool, no matter what the fool does, is just wasting. They're just wasting what they got. Now, would you want to give honor to, to somebody who is wise, smart, intelligent that you look up to? Or do you want to just give money to someone who's blowing money, somebody who's given, blowing money in, in millionaire casinos? No way. No way. Uh, uh, senior leadership, NCO in the Army. And... Uh, He'd come in one day for years. He'd go out to one of the local casinos. And he'd come in one day just bubbling with joy. He won 80 grand that night. I'm like, wow, that's pretty awesome. How'd you do it? He was dumping either 20s or 100s in the slot machine and hitting a few buttons and it just spit out 80 grand one night or whatever. He won. I'm like, man, that's, that's really cool. He goes, yeah, but now I got to pay taxes on it. I said, yeah, I get that. Um, but if you just calculate up everything you've lost in the last just 10 years, 
Um, would you say it's been an asset or a liability? Have you made money or lost money? He laughs at me and he goes, you really know how to kill my joy, don't you? He says, I probably lost 10 times that. You lost $800,000 in 10 years. You win 80 grand and you're happy? Really? I don't care if you lost that exact amount. That means you wasted all that time and you go back to zero. But it was fun. What? Here's 100 bucks. Here's 100 bucks. Here's 100 bucks. Go buy a deck of playing cards and play solitaire. Put that money back in your pocket or put it somewhere it can actually go to good use. Not some millionaire's drunk party or prostitution. Man, that stuff it just gets aggravating. If a wise man has an argument with a fool, the fool only rages and laughs, and there is no quiet. That's pretty accurate. A fool gives full vent to his spirit, but a wise man quietly holds back. How about this? End of Proverbs, Proverbs 30. There are three things that are stately in their tread. In their tread. Four are stately in their stride. The lion, which is mightiest among beasts and does not turn back, before anyone, the strutting rooster, and a he-goat, and a king whose army is with him. If you have been foolish, exalting yourself, or if you have been devising evil, put your hand on your mouth, hmm. for pressing milk produces curds, pressing nose, the nose produces blood, and pressing anger produces strife. There are some descriptive, uh, there are some descriptive characteristics of fools and what's inside them. We're going to break that open in this last little bit. In Psalms 14.1, we already touched on that earlier. The fool says in his heart there is no God. They are corrupt. They do abominable deeds. There is none who does good. Mark 7, 20 through 22, and he said, What comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, Coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. What part of that is let your light so shine? Ah, uh, none. None. Matter of fact, that's all let, look at me, isn't it? Every bit of that. Look at me, satisfy me. Let's keep driving. Let's jump down. It gets worse. That was Mark. How about we add some uh, Romans 121 through 31? For all they, although they knew God, wait a minute, are we talking about some of these people who call themselves a Christian yet they're creating their own religion? Oh, therefore, all, for although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him. Saying thank you for this loaf of bread is not praying. It's barely talking to God. But they became futile, futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools. They exchanged, exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images. Wait a minute. Okay, wait a minute. Images resembling mortal man or women, if you want to look at it. I mean, what do you call it? pornography? It's images resembling... This is says, mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. Therefore, God gave them up to the lusts of their heart, to impurity, to the, dis, to the dishonoring of their body among themselves, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served the, create, the, the creature rather than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason... God gave them up to dishonorable passions. For the women exchanged natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. And the men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passions for one another, men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty for their error. I'm not going into detail. If, you need to hold, if I need to hold your hand and specifically state what that is, not you, but any listener, Reach out to me in the comments. Since they did not see it fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind to do what ought not to be done. They were filled with all manner of unrighteousness, evil, covetousness, malice. They were full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, maliciousness. 
They are gossips, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to their parents, foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless. I sure wouldn't want them to be a leader in my country, would you? Oh, by absolutely no means. This is what comes out of a person. This is what's defiling them. God gave them up to their passions and desires. And then I have that list of 29. I have 29 listed out here. We'll run them real quick. This is, comes right out of Matthew 7, 20, Romans 1, 26, and I added a couple at the very end. But unrighteousness, unrighteous, evil, covetousness, malice, envy, murder, strife, deceit, maliciousness, gossip, slander, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, foolish and fools, faithless, heartless, ruthless, evil thoughts, sexually immoral, sensualities, adultery, theft, wickedness, and then our favorite three, pride, greed, and lust. I wouldn't mind going through all of those and finding out where pride, lead and, pride lust, and, lust, and greed hit all three of those because it would be. I wouldn't say they're my favorite. No, I'm not my favorite, no. but to the, to the show, they're yeah. the ones that we hit a lot. Because if you could take out pride, lust, and greed, you wouldn't have unrighteous evil, covetousness. That's pride, or that's greed. Malice, pride, envy, greed, strife, pride, deceit, greed, gossip, pride, slander, pride, haters of God, pride. How did the thoughts, how did these thoughts and images and desires grow in there? How did we learn about these things that we just covered, these 29? A lot of times people say, well, I read about them in the Bible. Yeah, but if you just didn't read the Bible and I was to ask you to define each one of those words, you could. Define murder. Well, it says in the Bible, if you hate someone, you've already committed murder, right? Yeah, that's one way. The other way is take someone's life. Okay. What about lying? Lying? To intentionally, willfully tell somebody that is something that is deceitfully wrong, mm -hmm. that's not true. You know it's true. That's a lie. What about gossip? You see, that's we big, can... That's a big one. But we can honestly give each one of these a definition. Yeah. So without looking at the Bible, we can define what's in the heart of people. So how do you get that out of there? Zip them off. That'd be one way. Or at least you're proving you're not a fool by shutting up. <laughs> Yeah, but then, then somebody might take it as, oh, you're rude then. If you Maybe. Just, you, know. you can't change how people take sure. things. Yeah. You can't change how people take things. I, you can't hold... You, you've heard that, oh, you've changed yeah. kind of mentality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. I've heard it just because, this week. Because you, they said something and, and instead of... And I almost did it the other day, but I was just like, I helped an elderly woman shovel her ground and she asked, well, what's your name again? Or what's your name? And I just gave her my name and she's like, what's your last name? And I was like, I'm sorry, I don't know you. I was just doing something, you know, nice. Maybe she wanted to know you by name to pray for you. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Consider maybe something that I've been challenged with a lot is in my thoughts, when somebody says or does, steering to the negative side, I'm assuming the negative, how's the negative get in there? Thought. I mean, if she's an old lady, an older lady who, who can't shovel and you're doing a good deed, I mean, what's she going to do to you? Nothing. Throw something in your cookie dough? I was hoping she'd throw a snowball at she me. She probably later. would. <laughs> or, this or is good packing snow for yeah. snowballs. <laughs> I remember my brother-in-law used to do uh, DJ, and he was really good, too, with weddings. and He'd take me along with him. A lot of times when, what I'd notice is during the weddings, you get them up in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, a lot of the ladies, either their spouse died or they've been single for a long time, they didn't dance with anybody. I mean, there's 30, 40 years between me and some of these gals. I like dancing sometimes. I'd get out there in that chapter of my life, and I would just have fun. Pretend to dance? Yeah. Just, just have fun seen. with it. Who cares if you're into rhythm? They don't care. I always thought, like, going to the gym when I was at the gym the other day. Yeah. I started seeing all the pamphlets. I'm like, I don't really know how to dance, but I'd want that someday if I'm getting Why married. Not? Exactly. Exactly. They teach dance right there. Yeah. So it's a little extra class, but... I grabbed a pamphlet, but yeah. I probably lost it by now. <laughs> I know somebody who knows somebody who probably find another one. <laughs> or maybe just go go to, well, you could, I guess, go to somebody that knows how to dance and ask them, hey, could you teach me? Or... Mm -hmm. So if these thoughts, images, and desires 
are put into those people of the world and people who live of the world. And today, I would say a lot of the way that this information gets into our thought processes through media, through programming. I mean, how many TV shows you watch where there's violence? Every day. You can't hardly get away from it. Mm-hmm. You want to watch the news? They're talking about somebody's either killing or getting killed. And the problem is they can't get the facts right. They can't even get the weather right. So if you can't get the weather right, I'm not interested. But either way, I mean, you, sexual immorality. How'd that get in there? Sensuality, adultery. How'd that get in there? Pictures. Or Maybe. Or Could be taught. taught. Could have been something done to a person. How about yeah. faithlessness? How about haters of God? How about haughtiness? How much of this stuff is taught by our parents? Yeah. Hey, yeah, uh, if you need some more pens for school, don't buy them. I'll get them from work. You know, I heard this story one time. This little kid, second grade, we'll say, he was always leaving his pencils at home, okay? So if he left his pencil at home, he'd just go up and grab one off the teacher's desk when she wasn't looking. And this happened on and on. The teacher was catching her out of that corner of her eye. Parent-teacher conferences come up. So she says, you know something? I'm going to make a note of this. It's happened every day for a month. I'm going to talk to mom and dad about it and see what's going on. Maybe they don't have. And if they don't have, I'll give, mm-hmm. right? So mom and dad come in, and um, the teacher's talking to him. and says, you know, little guy here, he... Every day it comes up and he just helps himself to the pencil. And, I, and sometimes takes the nice one off, off the desk. I, I just don't understand it. Can I give you guys some pencils? And Dad's just taking it really harsh. And he goes, you know, I just don't understand. I thought I told him if he needed anything, let me know. I just grabbed some at work. He didn't own the place. How many people just... Grab those pencils, that notepad, that extra handful of paper at work, and go stub it in their home printer, knowing you're going to use it for personal use. Isn't that theft? That's Maybe stealing. the little guy learned how to steal from watching Dad. Mm-hmm. He just didn't get good at it yet. Now, if you own the place, by all means, it's yours. You know, a lot of what we looked at here would honestly remind me of a Cretan. Remember we talked last week about the Cretans being ruthless, mean, lazy, slothful people, undisciplined, right? The 29 items we listed, how much of that sounds like a Cretan? To me, that'd be a better description of what a Cretan is than four or five words. Could this be true? The only excuse for lack of discipline is lack of discipline? Is this also the result of our failures? Lack of discipline? Boy, that one's kind of chilly when it hits you in the spine. How's all this foolishness stop? What would you say? I've lived like a fool my whole life. That 29 list was everything I hit 29 times a day, each. How would I stop all that? Yeah, kind of set the example for your kids in a way, right? Yeah. But even if I ain't got kids, could I stop that? Could in my heart I stop that stuff without God? No. No. How much of what we mentioned starts in thought? Everything, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So if it, being a fool, being foolish, living under those those ways in life is something that hasn't gotten us to a place where we want to, you know, call it successful in life or comfort, okay? Well, first of all, somebody lives comfortably, they're just lazy. Comfort makes humans lazy. Why do you think they put soldiers in the middle of nasty? Jungle wasn't comfortable. It got comfortable. Desert wasn't comfortable. Got comfortable. Right? It's cold. But we're still waiting on the comfort. My feet are frozen. I need use a pair of socks. I have two pair of socks on today <laughs> and boots. I have light pair of socks on. You did me just right for the winter, Mr. Carhart Coat. Yeah. <laughs> Here's my suggestion of how all this foolishness stops. I can't do it. I can't beat addiction, lust, pride, or greed. I can't. It's impossible. Because the flesh desires these things. So what i got to do is then start changing it from upstairs. Up in the thinker, right? Mm -hmm. Let me offer this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes, believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Believes. Where do I buy that bucket of believes? 
You don't buy it nowhere. It's in your thinker, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that means that if I believe that Jesus Christ came and died for my sins, and I have asked him, or I ask him to forgive me of my past, of my history, then my story changes, right? Yeah, that is who I was, repent, no longer who I am. Away. Right. Yeah. Okay, so it's belief that we do, we deal with, right? We just start with belief. And if you believe something, you change it, right? Like if you believe that two plus two is 97, you'll change all of the way you figure your two plus two equations, right? Mm -hmm. What happens if 97 is not the right answer? You could believe the wrong thing too. This is how religion is formed around misbeliefs, misinterpretations. Um, people running to churches just to change their, to, to align their church experience with their political experience. What about the people who are changing churches and rewriting the, the, the scripture just to change their sexual preference? You mean it goes deeper than just God said I do? Oh yeah. God said man changed it, and a lot of people want to follow what man says. Mm. Believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Now, if you believe in something, it should do something, right? Mm -hmm. If it don't do anything, then ain't nothing there, right? If I tell you, hey, man, month, two months ago, I put corn in the ground. It'd be stupid because we're coming to the cold season. But if I put it down there during the plant season, and three months later, there's nothing there, maybe I didn't plant anything that was capable of growing. Maybe I didn't plant. Yeah. No, that's, see, that's, from the, that's for next year. Yeah, it's all in the field. 100 acres is planted. Nope, I don't know where that extra seed come from. That We're going to hang on to that till next year. She'll never know. In about a month and a half, she will. <laughs> when there's no greenery poking up out of the dirt in a few weeks. So wait, we get the Holy Spirit living on board. We should see some greenery shortly down the road. People turning away from old lifestyles, addictions falling off, choices in life falling off. So what do we do then? Well, if we jump over to Acts, we're going to go from John 3 to Acts 2. i got to ask you something. <laughs> and then Peter said to them, repent. Did that. And be baptized. Okay, that's the next step. Full submersion. <laughs> Splash. When you, take a bath, when you take a bath, you don't throw water on top of your head and tell yourself you're clean. Right? Full submersion. Repent and be baptized. In the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sin. And then you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's what comes and lives in you. Now, you've got the Holy Spirit living inside of you. You are a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5.17 gives us that little trick. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, a new has come. That's a simple scripture. Now what happens? We got Christ living inside. And I had all these big whoop de doo plans for my life. And I was going to go, and I was going to do, and I was going to get, and I was going to be, right? But then how did you become a failure? How did you become miserable? How did you become undisciplined? How did you become that 29 items we listed up top there? Deceit and malice and gossip and slander, adultery, evil thoughts, ruthless, ruthless pride, greedy, love. How did you become that? Oh, maybe, you would. maybe your plans have changed now. Because in Jeremiah 29 11, we see that God has a plan for you, declares the Lord. A plan not for welfare and not for evil, but to give you a future and a hope but I don't know what that future and hope is yet. Okay, I got a scripture for that. Be still and know I am God. I will be exalted in the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Basically, while you don't know, talk to God, worship God. Hmm, that might give you the knowing. But what do I do if the whole world falls apart around me? Isaiah 40, 31 will answer that one for you. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Hmm. What else? It can't be that easy. What do I got to do next? After all that, I've given my life to the Lord. I made a confession of faith. I've been baptized. The Holy Spirit's living inside. 
I know I need to be still, and I'm waiting on the Lord, and I'm praying, and I know he's got a plan for me. What else? There's got to be a little bit more. There is. And they ask him in Matthew 22, 36 through 39. This might sound vaguely familiar to you. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And he said to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. In closing, I have one question to think on. Why is God so patient with us? Could it be because love is patient and God is love? This is Daniel and Ronnie with Park Talks. Thanks for joining us today. Be blessed, everyone.